Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 says this. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. The living is in the seed. Life is in the seed. What's amazing to me is plants are, has anybody ever planted something in your yard? Now, somebody must have planted something in my yard because it wasn't my wife. She kills all plants except for one. We've had it for, since the, since, someone gave us a gift the day we opened the church. That is the only plant that still lives. But if you take a seed and you plant that seed, what's going to happen to that seed? It's going to grow. You're going to have flowers. If you plant a tree, you're going to get a, yeah, let's just say, if you plant an oak tree, you're going to get a, if you plant a pine tree, you're going to get a, if you plant a bush, you're going to get a, if you plant a marigold, you're going to get a, Everything makes sense in God's principle when you start understanding that life that's in every single seed is what's going to be produced out of that seed. So the determination comes to what are you and I planting to get what we're getting? Because whether we like it or not, God is not the one who determines the seed we do. So if you're having problems in your marriage, the problem comes down to what are you planting in your marriage? You're having problems with your children. What are you planting in your children? You're having problems in your finances. What are you planting in your finances? Everything that we are, everything that we are is wrapped up in the life of the seed. Come on now. Animals are produced by a seed. Can I hear an amen? People are produced by a seed. How many of you here are people? You came from a seed. In fact, what's amazing about God is when a baby girl is born, where she go? When the baby girl is born, they have up to 450,000 seeds for childhood. They will never have another one made. Girls are born with all the seeds that they're ever going to have. Isn't that amazing? You and I came from one of those seeds. Human beings, God had to, when he said, let there be, when he said, I'm creating the seed, when he said that seed will produce itself, when God activated that eternal value, when God activated that eternal principle, God himself stays within his principles and he lives his own principle. You and I are created by the seed. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, the word of God is the seed. The word of God declares that our mouth, the very words that we speak, are seeds. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it eat its fruit. I remember I was praying for a person up, up, up in Newfield, and they were dying. And I took a group of believers with me, and we, we laid hands on this, this person. And uh, the power of God came on them so strong that literally where the cancer was literally physically started burning, which is always a sign of healing in God's principle. Three days later, religious people came to their house and said, well, God don't do that no more. God doesn't do that any longer. Everything they were believing for, everything they put their faith in, where they placed their seed was stolen from them. Listen, the devil, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, the devil always tries to steal the seed. Why? Because in the seed is life. Where the seed is planted will produce. And if it produces, it will bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold. If it's on good ground, the seed of our mouths. What are we seeding? That woman on the airplane? was seeding death to her child. Guess what? You want to know what the real sad is? That child will probably do the same to their, to their child. Why? Because the very words that we speak, we will eat the fruit of. Why? Because there's seeds. 
The Bible talks about doubt and unbelief and about how a man thinks so he is. Even the very thoughts that we have in our head, they are seeds and they come out of our mouth. And when they are planted, they will either activate faith or deactivate faith. And you activate God or deactivate God. Either bring forth a miracle or cancel a miracle. Everything we say and we think has seed to it. And we've got to be careful. That's why life and death are in the power of the tongue. One of the most damning things we can do to ourselves as individuals is call ourselves stupid. Why? Because we're planting seeds in our own garden. See, this is eternal stuff. Listen, I, I know I'm not making anybody happy today. And I, I know that not everybody, not, I, I know I'm not preaching hellfire and brimstone. I'm not in a boat. But I'm teaching you something this morning that, you know, I know people that go to Zig Ziglar, you know, before he passed away, and they'd spend thousands of dollars to sit in a seminar and to hear him teach, to teach how to make money, how to make mammon, how to make more money. But we come to church and we say, oh, pastor, you know, that sermon was a little bit boring. Listen, today, this message, if you get a hold of this seed... If you get a hold of this seed, the seed of the word of God, and you plant it on good ground, your entire life will transition. Your life will change. Why? Because you will understand that as a man plants, he will reap. The Bible declares in the book of Galatians, even our very actions, don't be deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, he shall have the flesh reap corruption. If he sows to the spirit, he shall have the spirit reap eternal life. Listen, our lives are where they are right now because of the seed we planted. It's not God. God's not sitting there saying, damn them. Crush that one. Cause divorce in this one. Do drugs in this one. God's not doing What we have done is we have said, listen, here's my life. The open, pe- the open plate The cleanest slate on this entire planet is a baby that has nothing planted in their seed bed. And what we plant, I've had adoptive parents say to me, I don't understand where where that stuff came from. I never raised them like that. I know you didn't, but the seed that came with them, I want you to know seed is powerful. Seed is the principle of God, and seed God wants to teach us so that everything we do and everything we say and everywhere we go, we will know that we are planting the seed of the gospel. I don't know about that woman on the airplane, but this one thing I know, I know this, that she got some seed the other day on that airplane, and she can run, but she can't hide. Why? Because the Holy Ghost, he's the one fostering. He's the one working. He's the one ministering. He's the one walking. Watering that seed, and as I pray, God is going to activate that very thing in her life. The power of seed. What is your life? Don't blame God. You seeded for it. What I love about God is this. His mercies are new every morning. He's not the God of yesterday, excuse me, not the God of yesterday. He's the God of the now. That we don't have to remain the same way we are. What I love about this is this, is that you can take out the old, but you can plant some new. You can say, God, this is the harvest I want. God, this is where I want to be. God, this is what I want to do. So this is what I'm going to plant. This is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to think. This is how I'm going to act. God, I'm going to change. God, I'm going to change the seeds I'm planting from, from my life. Jesus. And until you decide to change what seed you're planting, you cannot be, ex- you cannot be shocked at the harvest you're receiving because you've planted it to receive it. See, until you make a, de- a decision to stop, to stop planting weeds, you will never have a garden of fruit. And that has nothing to do with God. We are the ones that determine the seed that we choose. We are the ones that say, this is what I want my life to be. You can say, you can say somebody else did it to you. They didn't do it to you. We have the right to repel what other seed is being put in our lives. Except for babies. 
And that's where some parents damn their own children. But God, thank you, Jesus. But God, he can put in new seed and bring new life. See, seed time and harvest is not a religious thing. It's not a televangelist thing. It's a God thing. Seed time and harvest is you and me. It is where we are. It's what we do. It's everywhere that every day. But until we get this thing, we're shocked at what happens in our lives. But what about that man, Pastor? He lost the 60 million. But one thing I love about God, he can take those things which are meant for bad and turn them for good. He can take bad seed and make new seed. He can take bad seed and replant. He can take bad seed and say, listen now, that was the old ground, but here's the new ground. God is the God of new beginnings. God is the God of the second chance. God is the God of restoration. God is the God. He is God, and he loves having fresh seed bed. But we choose what we want. i got to move on. The kingdom of God is seed. The kingdom is likened to a seed. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after the full grain in the head. But... When the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, and because he because the harvest has come. The king, God's entire kingdom runs by this principle. His entire kingdom. I don't know. Can I share with you what I'm feeling right now? I know some of you are sleeping. But some of you need to wrap yourself in the head. Because you're accountable for this message after this. Listen, I'm not here to play church. I'm here to preach life. I'm not here to do church. I'm here to raise the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is the principle of seed time and harvest. This is where we are. You can look at your life and see your life. And you can see when you started replanting. One of the things that's really cool when you hunt, you see where they do clear cuts. But what they do after the clear cut, they come in and they, they should. They plant, usually, they're usually pines. And you see the most beautiful thing when they're fully erect, 25, 30 feet high. And you see lines of pines, the beautiful pines there. Really, really good, quiet time. It's just real peaceful. But that, that was the replant. Where is your life? What are you planting? What is, what is the seed that you're giving out every day? You drop the F-bomb at work all the time, right? What? Don't say yes. <laughs> you drop the F-bomb at work all day, you know, and then, then, then all of a sudden you see some, somebody at work hurting, and you invite them to church, and they go, what? You go to church? Well, that's the language I have to have because that's the language that I have with those friends. Oh, really? You know, you're going to the bar. You're whipping them down with them. Everybody gets spiritual once they get a little tipped. You start sharing Jesus with them. You know what? You've just planted seeds, the same seeds they were planting, and what makes you think they're going to hear the seeds of heaven? Our lives change people. Because your life is a seed. There's another seed out there. It's called finances. Turn to someone and say money. I knew it. I knew this was coming around to money. Well, just think you're smarter than the average bear then, aren't you? Money is also seed, and whether you like it or not, some of you have had major emotional situations in your life, major catastrophes in your life because of exchange. 
Some of you have lost innumerable amounts of sleep because of exchange. Remember when we preached on salt. What was salt? Salt was actually money back in the time of the Romans. It's not about greenbacks. It's about, the ma- it's about trade. It's about how you and I acquire and how we spend and how we have. God thought about that. Listen, what I love about watching, yeah, I watch it, you know, I, I tape it, you know, and uh, DVR'd it. That, that one on, um, uh, what, is, what is that one? What was that one? That Gold Rush? Yeah, it's called Gold Rush. How many of you like that show? It's so stinking cool, isn't it? You know, they're, they're trying to find what? These little grains of gold. Tons and tons of dirt to find the little gold. You know, then to get that gold, they, they found like the, the rerun I just watched was 200 ounces, you know. 200 ounces of gold at what, $1,800 an ounce. Stinking, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Woo! But in heaven, you'll walk on streets of gold. It's not even currency in heaven. See, so we can't we can equate when we start talking about finances as money, as money that we, we, we get ripped from our hands and so on. This is about how exchange has occurred in our lives. And many of you, you have gone upon spiritual problems. You've come upon spir- family problems. Listen, because of money. The Bible says very clearly, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, but, I, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who rows bountifully will also reap bountifully, so that each one as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Who determines your finances? Your boss? No. Who determines your finances? The economy? No. Who determines your finances? You do. Or else God is a liar, and we should all turn around and leave. God said those who sow sparingly shall reap sparingly. Those who reap bountifully, excuse me, sow bountifully shall reap bountifully. As a man sows, so shall he reap. Can I throw you under the bus, Kayla? You and Terry? About your giving? You don't mind? I won't give exact numbers. Here's a young couple married four years Four years, two babies. He's a contractor, sometimes working, sometimes not working. Contractor. They actually gave 20 or 30? 20% tithe last year. Have lacked nothing. Lacked nothing. Why? Because she was taught many years ago, and he was taught, that when you sow, you shall reap. And that God brings your finances not just from the one avenue. God can bring it from anywhere. It might be in a deal of a car. It might be that someone puts money in your your mailbox. It might be that your loved one gives you an extra bonus on Christmas. It might be that somebody blesses somebody else and they turn around and bless you. It might be somebody passes you a a, a finance. It's right in church when you're walking by because God let it on their heart. It might be that all of a sudden God gives you a raise, that God gives you. This is seed. Her tithe, their tithe was 10%. Their seed was 10%. And I think they gave probably more in seed. Where are you? People say to me all the time, Pastor, you're rich, aren't you? Dude, I showed it last year at the annual business meeting. I make $30,000 less than every average pastor in this region who passes a church this size. I'm talking like uh, Binghamton, Syracuse, and so on and so forth. Two people working, I make $72,000. That includes all my benefits. But baby, I live good. I've got a nice house. I've got a great Harley Davidson. I've got a great wife. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I said the Harley before the wife. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jesus. I don't want to go through that again. Okay. My kids are blessed. They went through, they both got associate's degrees, and we're paying for that. You know, my, 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 my uh, daughter, she did all those things with cheerleading. She's got a car. She, you know, how, how is that possible? It's, it's not because I'm rich. It's because 
Number one, we are faithful with ungodly man, man, money. But number two, we've learned how to sow, baby. We sow all the time. You see, a good farmer doesn't sow once. He has perpetual harvest. How does, a, how does a good farmer do that? He perpetually plants so that there's a harvest always coming around. Seed time and harvest. You see, a farmer is wise in what they do. And we were talking, uh, I think, in Rock Solid Faith class. How a farmer works, they first of all choose the seed that they want. Why, what do you mean to choose the seed they want? If you want peas, you don't plant corn. If you want corn, you don't plant asparagus. The farmer has to choose the seed. And then what he does after he's chosen the seed, he then has to look at the ground. Is the ground healthy or not healthy? Has to do what's there. How do you choose healthy when you're seeding in the kingdom of God? Souls had better be getting saved. People had better be getting healed. People have got to be changed. And they've got to be brought up in ministry. If that's not happening in a church, that's not good ground. That's found in Matthew chapter 13. Good ground. When you sow into good ground, then what you do from there is this, is that you make sure that you take out the weeds. You pray over it. You water it. You, and you've seen those, you know, those agricultural fields with the water spraying all over the place. It's beautiful. But what it does is it produces. Why? Because when you water, it brings forth the seed. The seed that looks dead when you plant it has life in it. And when you water it, when you plant it properly, when you maintain it, it is always going to bring forth the harvest. And not just the harvest that, that one seed comes back. But every seed that you plant, listen now, just take corn. Every seed of corn that you plant has at least two to three years on the stalk, and then it has about 200 uh, other kernels on. So what's happened? It has multiplied beyond your wildest ability. But that, not co- that does not come because you sat back and you threw and you just said, hey, I hope this works. You have to have understanding. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I know I'm long. Buy the CD. Thank you, Sarah. You're gracious. I need you to get this. Not just so that you're blessed, but that the house is blessed. Because we can only do as so much as, as what we're able to. And, you know, this house takes this principle. The church does not have to tithe. Never says it in the Word. But this church last year gave about $180,000 to people that were hurting, to outside ministries, whether they be foreign or domestic. We gave all that money away. Why did we give that? Not that we couldn't use it, but because the principles of sowing and reaping are so powerful. Why? What happened? What happened was this. While many churches were digressing, this house went from $720,000 last year to $904,000 last year, a 30% increase. And listen, when I shared that where I just came from, they sat back. There were only three churches in that entire seminar that had increased. And the increase doesn't come by accident. It comes because of God's principles. If you want increase in your life, you've got to activate the principle of seed time and harvest. I know I've got to end. I'm I'm losing people. Right by your seat, you're going to find something. We're going to do something we've never done before in this church. How many of you know the vision is big in this house? I said, how many of you know the vision is big in this house? We have them by your seats. Get them and pass them down. Get them and pass them down. In this house, we have a vision, and where there's vision, there must be provision. And since God does not have a printing press in heaven, I did chat with him about that, if he could create one. God needs to bless you so you can bless the house. And so we're going to do something on Easter Sunday morning. We're going to do, uh, on Easter Sunday morning, we're going to have what's called a resurrection seed. What's resurrection? Jesus being the very first seed rose from the dead. Life. We're going to receive an offering on Easter Sunday morning. Oh, now listen now. Do not leave the message of the seed because you don't like the tail of the seed. You hear me? This is the powerful part about seed faith. And that is this. We all determine what we're going to sow. We determine what we are going to have. We determine where we're going to be. We determine, not God. Now I want to tell you this too. 
I have never done anything that I haven't asked anybody else to do. Say amen. I, we had been planning for about a year to go on a motorcycle trip from Florida to Louisiana. Cost about $2,000. While we were down on this trip, the Holy Spirit said to me, that's mine. Cancel your trip. I called last night, canceled the trip, and all that money will be seed for the kingdom of heaven. It's about $2,000. I, I really would rather sometimes go on the trip. But you know something? I learned this. I'll be able to go on more than one trip because I'm going to seed into the kingdom of God, and I'm going to seed into good ground. I don't want anybody to fill these out. I want you to go home and pray about it. Because you and I are the ones that determine the seed. You and I are the ones that we determine what we're going to reap and harvest. You and I are the ones that are going to determine where we're going to be and how financially blessed or not blessed. It depends, and it's all up to us. And it's not about amounts. It's about obedience. So I want you to go pray. Jesus, what do you want me to give? And when you do, God's going to give you something. And then... We're going to do something called a financial fast. Has anybody ever heard of that before? I'm calling the body to a financial fast for the month of March. That is this. When you would go out to eat, don't go out to eat. Save that money and put it in your envelope. When you're going to go spend money on a movie, put it in the envelope for one month. When you're going to go buy a lollipop, or a <coughs> coffee. <coughs> oh, did everybody? Oh, I heard everybody. Ooh, ooh. When you're going to go buy a coffee, take that $2 and some odd cents and put it in the envelope. 